What's up YouTube, OptoInfo, back with another week of video. This week is video two of four of OCAP's optics, how to get greater than 75% on the optics portion of the OCAP. So what are we doing? We're just doing questions, remember? You know, I, I love Dr. David Hunter's um, podcast, I watch him on podcasts, for optics, but it's hours long and it's going over concepts that are hard to rein in and apply to a question in a, in a time crunch. So we're just going to go through questions and uh, memorize some formulas and just have this down pat right before the test. Go through it with me. If you can do all these 25 questions um, a couple times before the, right before the test, I think you'll do just fine. I, I'm in fact saying you'll get over 75 percentile. Um, so this week is videos uh, or questions 7 through uh, 15 and um, I'm going to put a, a link that has the PDF for the questions and answers. That's it. Enjoy. Number 8, a patient with legal blindness um, from macular degeneration with poor vision is given 15 doctor magnifier for reading by a low vision specialist. What's the patient's most likely visual acuity? So this is just testing uh, your knowledge of Kastenbaum's rule and um, you should know Oh, the way I'll, I'll show you by an example how this works. So, if you imagine someone with poor vision, let's say they're 2200, uh, Kessin's Baum rule says that if you take the inverse of this, 200 divided by 20 equals 10, then a 10 diopter lens, um, you know, plus 10 diopter lens will give you um, around 2040, 2050 ish uh, vision. Um, if you if you take that 10 diopter lens and put it into like a pair of glasses and then you hold it at the you hold whatever you're reading at the focal distance away so in this example you'd have a plus 10 diopter spectacle um on top of whatever their normal uh prescription is they have a plus 10 spectacle lens there and you would hold whatever you're reading one over 10 meters away um 0.1 or 10 centimeters away. So uh, that's Kestenbaum's rule. So if we use that for our problem here, um, the, he was given a 15 diopter lens instead of a 10. So 15 diopters equal to, we know 20 is gonna be constant. So something over 20 equals 15. We just magnify this out or we just multiply this over here. So X is equal to 15 times 20, which is Two times 15 is 30, plus the carry of the 10, so 300. Um, so the patient's vision uh, is going to be the reciprocal here, which is 2300. Okay, so that is C. Um, <clears throat> number nine. Uh, oh, side note, side note. What would be the equivalent handheld? Okay. I read this before, it's sort of worded weird. So instead, just this is the question. Here's a side note, how much magnification is this? So if you use a 15 diopter lens, how much magnification does that provide? Um, and here, we're not doing the M equals, uh, uh, magnification equals U over V. That's not what we're, that doesn't apply. We're, this is different, this is just um, angular magnification. And so the formula for angular magnification is M equals the power um, in diopters over four. So you just divide the lens by four. So 15 divided by four, which gives you 3.75 X. So 3.75 X is the magnification. And so if you look at something, um, if, you, if you have a 15 diopter uh, lens on your spectacles and you're holding the ob object, one over 15 meters away, um, then it'll appear 3.75 times larger than if you removed those 15 diopter spectacles and held the object at uh, a conventional 25 centimeters away. Um, so that's what that means. Number nine, which of the following has the highest spherical equivalent? So which one is the most positive here? For these, uh, obviously you have to know how to calculate the spherical equivalents. I've already done that, so I'll sort of block that there. Um, and you just have to calculate them, them all out. Uh, if we do uh, minus two, or so let's actually start with the cylinder. So minus the, uh, half the cylinder plus the sphere will give us our spherical equivalents. Um, so I'll put SE here. And so for, for A, it'll be uh, 2.5 uh, minus two. So that'll be 
uh, 0.5. And for B, it'll be 0.75 um, plus nothing, 0.75. For C, it'll be 2.5 um, minus 3, which would be a negative 0.5. So we know that one's out. Um, and we know this one right now, our leader is 0.75. For D, it's um, 2.25, which is half the sill. Uh, 2.25 minus 1.5, which again will give us 0.75. So these are two are tied. And then for E, um, this will be 1.5 minus 0.5, which will give us a plus one. And that's our that's our winner there. So E is the answer there. Number 10, which of the following represents a Jackson Cross cylinder? So for this, you just need to know that a Jackson Cross cylinder has a spherical equivalence of zero or plano. Okay, so that will mean that uh, we're looking for a cylinder that is uh, double the sphere. So, um, so this is if this is two, this would need to be four. That's wrong. Two and no. Two and four. No. Nope. Two point five and five. Yes. Yeah, so this here, the sphere. I'm sorry, the cylinder is double the um, the sphere. So, if we calculate the spherical equivalence, it would be uh, half the sill, which is two minus two point five. Um, plus the sphere, which is 2.5, which is equal to zero. Um, and I'll, I'll do another video on the concept behind the Jackson Cross Cylinder later. Number 11, a cycloplegic streak retinoscopy is performed on a non adult testing patient at a testing distance of 80 centimeters. Okay, so that's our working distance. We'll deal with that later. We can go ahead and, and convert it into a... Um, we can go ahead and convert it into a uh, power if we want, one over um, 0.8. So this is 1.25. So we'll subtract that at the end. That's our working distance. Um, the result for the right eye is as follows. One doctor sphere neutralizes the reflex when the streak is horizontal, and three doctor sphere neutralizes the reflex when the streak is vertical. Which of the following refractions is correct for the right eye? Okay, so this seems like it's uh, it's um, going to be difficult, but it's actually pretty simple once you have a few concepts down. So um, we're essentially going to first draw out a power cross, uh, which is what you're doing when you're streaking somebody. And so a plus one um, neutralized the reflex uh, when it was horizontal. So that's like this. And you're moving up and down, so we're really testing the steepness or the power vertically, right? So this will be a plus one, and this is a power cross, not the axis. This is power, and a plus three neutralizes when the reflex is vertical. That means uh, it's like this. Excuse me, this is like this. So we're going back and forth horizontally. So we're testing the power horizontally. So the power here is plus three. Okay. Um, now we need to convert this to uh, to a, a prescription, and the way we do that, and we'll, at the end, we'll, we can't forget about our working distance, we'll, we'll correct that at the end. Um, so the way we convert this into a prescription, um, we want to use plus cylinder, so we'll start with the least, uh, the most um, negative or the smallest number, so that'd be for our sphere, so that's plus one, and the difference will be our cylinder, um, so that's plus two. At now, remember the convention for uh, for a prescription is that um, it's an axis, and this is a power cylinder, power across here. This is a power across, and now this is axis, so it's going to be ninety degrees away. So the power is one eighty, so that means the axis is ninety, so times ninety, and then at the end we have to take our working distance off the cylinder. Um, so this is going to be. Uh, what was our work at 1.25 so this is going to be negative um, uh, 0.25 plus 2 times 90 so that'll be c number 12 a patient is refracted using a stenopaic slit with the following result i'm going to stop right there what the heck is a stenopaic slit um it's just a slit stenopaic is um comes from greek it just means narrow um, so it's just a narrow slit. I can I like to think about it as like a uh, a linear pinhole, a one-dimensional pinhole. Um, 
And uh, the way it works is um, you're, you measure the power um, of the eye. Um, if you held it like this, and you'd measure the vertical power of the patient. If you held it horizontally, you'd measure the horizontal uh, power of the patient's eye. So it, um, and if you added those two, you'd make a power cross and then you have, uh, you can convert that to a prescription. That's exactly what the question is asking. Um, so a patient is refracted using a cineplex slit with following results. So when it was held at 90 degree, when you hold it vertically, um, you get plus one. So if we do, so we just, this maps out a power cross exactly. So this is plus one. Um, and then when we hold it horizontally, like that, we get minus two. So boom, it maps exactly to a power cross. My One of my male co-residents used to say, the slit equals power. Um, and then he'd walk around and say, don't put the slit on a pedestal, Mark. That's a highly inappropriate mnemonic, but, and I didn't come up with it, but I'm sharing it with you because it works and you can remember it, uh, might be useful on the test. So um, this, exactly correlates with a power cross. So how do we convert this over? To, and it says, assume the working distance has already been taken into account. So this is, I, I guess you would use this during uh, streak retinoscopy. Um, it, like you wouldn't even need cylindrical lenses. You could just use this to isolate um, it horizontal, the prescription or the power vertically or horizontally, and then you could just use uh, spherical lenses over the top of it. So, so it says, you know, assume the working distance has already been taken into account. Um, so we're not going to subtract that from our prescription that we come up with here. So again, how do we convert power cross to a prescription? First, you start with the most minus. That's here. So minus two is going to be our sphere. And then add the difference, which is plus three. The difference between minus two and plus one is, is positive three. Um, and then it's going to be at, remember, this is a power cross up here. This is power. And this is our prescription, which is where we use the axis, which is nine degrees away from the power. So uh, plus three, which is this, we're talking about this power now, which is 90 degrees is vertical. So the axis is going to be 180 times 180. Um, so minus two plus three times 180. If our uh, working distance hadn't been taken into account, we would go ahead and subtract that from our sphere only. Um, but yeah, that's the answer. Just remember, the slit is the power. Number 13, an adult has diplopia and a, uh, with a right hyper. I like to draw my strabismus like this. Uh, right hyper of eight prism doppers, so eight um, right hypertropia. Eight prism doctor, right hypertropia, and a two prism doctor ET. I usually don't specify the I for e, for the horizontal strabismus ET XT, um, but whatever in the left eye. Uh, which combination of prisms is in his glasses would help align the two images um, to form? Okay, so here we're pretty much just test. You have to uh, know which way to do base up, base down, all that jazz, um, and we're splitting it between the two eyes. So um, just remember if you want the eye. To, you can think about it a couple different ways. Most people say if if the eye is up and you want it down, you, that's the direction you um, you put the base in the direction that you want the eye to go. Um, I do it a little bit different clinically, um, but we'll stick with that. So the right eye is up eight. So we, you know, if you put it all in the right eye, it'd be a base down prism, um, eight prism doctors base down. But we're going to split it, so we're just going to do four doctors base down. So that's going to be these these three here. And then um, in the in the other eye, uh, we do the opposite because you know you can think about a right hyper being a right hyper, or you can think about it being a right a uh, left hypo. So if that was the example, you'd want the uh, eye to go up, so you do base up or base up. So um, again, these are all still three in play. And then we look at the ET. So if the eye is crossed, we want it to go out. Um, so we do. Um, one base out, two divided by one, or, or two divided by two, it gives you one, we're splitting it between the two eyes, one base out, so these two, and then over here, base out, it's gonna be this one. So both eyes, you can think about being crossed, so they're both gonna need base out prism. Um, so D is the answer there, it's pretty simple. Number 14, I'm gonna go ahead and stop and tell you this one's worded weird. Um, it's pretty much just testing your knowledge of how a prism diopter power is defined, uh, which is this. If we have a prism here, 
That's not a good prism. That's a good prism. If we have um, light traveling through, you know, it would normally go straight and hit right here. For example, we have a wall one meter away. That's the convention is that this distance is one meter, okay? And then the light's actually being bent here because of the prism. And so this separation, let's say it's one centimeter. Um, so this would be defined as a one prism diopter uh, prism. So then the formula that I use is the separation in centimeters, and I just make this up, separation in centimeters over um, the distance in meters gives you the prism diopters, okay? So one centimeter over one meter gives you one prism diopter. And um, now if we apply our question, it's saying is the separation is 30 centimeters at five meter, uh, when it's five meters apart. So we can just use this same formula, separation over centimeter, separation in centimeters over uh, the distance in meters. So that'd be 30 centimeters divided by five meters. So I'm gonna give you six prism doctors. So that's the answer, six prism doctors. Number 15, without correction, a child complains that the object closer, that objects closer than 25 centimeters are blurry. Cyclopedic refraction measures uh, point plus five sphere in both eyes. How much combination does a child have? So this kid's got latent hyperopia, which is common in kids. Um, when you cyclopedic an adult, uh, you know, typically if you're plus five sphere, then you can't see a dang thing anytime, um, even at infinity or even at 20 feet, even at distance. But this kid, not only can he see clearly at distance, um, but he can see clearly at 25 centimeters away. Um, so this kid is walking around all the time with a little accommodation, um, a, you know, plus five accommodation all the time. So that's he, when he's do, using his distance vision, and then he can dial in even more power to bring that uh, to bring things that are 25 centimeters away into focus. But more than that, closer than that, he doesn't ha he can't accommodate for so. Um, let's look at this. Uh, so what, what's this total accommodation? Well, um, you need to know that first to just to get to infinity or just to get to distance in the focus, he uses plus five. And then to get it 25 centimeters away, we can go ahead and, you know, flip that and take the reciprocal, put that, make that into diopters, um, which is going to be one divided by 0.25 meters, which is going to be four diopters. So, you know, plus four is gonna give you plus nine. Um, so that's your answer. He's got a total of nine doctors of uh, total accommodation. All right, another 20 minutes of optics down the hatch. Stay strong, we got two more videos to go. You can do it. Peace.